I'm gonna be like the kook that just is frothing on everything. <laughs> One year everyone and welcome back to another episode. I'm pretty excited because I am currently packing my gear and I am headed down south diving for the first time. Way down south. In fact almost as yeah basically as far south as you can get on the mainland of Australia. Oh, yep, that's pretty flat. Gotten up super early and we're down here on the coast. The view is absolutely amazing. Just the coastline itself is it's pretty stunning. Like you don't really have beaches like this at home. It's it's yeah, it's pretty cool. So cool. This looks pretty epic. <laughs> so, we're all geared up. I'm in my 5 mil wetsuit. We've got a bit of a hike to get to the spot. Super picturesque. You got a car to spearfishing, Farno. Welcome back to another adventure. <laughs> this is like proper spelunking to get to the to get to the spot. <laughs> Holy moly. This is the hardest part. Once this is done, it's all down to here. How is this for a spot? Awesome. There's a seal heading into the, probably can't see it. I was a bit slow on the camera, but we're probably gonna be diving with a seal, I'd say. Woo! The March flies are like next level. Oh. And there's, look at this. There's like 30 March flies on my leg. We've made it to spot number one. Beautiful hike in. I need to organize my gear a bit better for the next hike. I'm super hot I'm in a five mil wetsuit. The water itself is actually really clear. Like, check this out. That is, that's crystal clear. Just wait until winter time down here, you gotta wear a 7 mil. Welcome back underwater everybody and the first thing that really stood out for me diving in Victoria was this underwater kelp. I mean this was just absolutely amazing. I've never seen anything like this and you can probably tell. This seaweed is unbelievable. The visibility is pretty good. It's probably like 5 meters at least I'd say. It's heaps better than what I was expecting. Yeah. Swimming along, I can see heaps and heaps of tasty reef fish. And I was actually really blown away with just the quantity of reef fish that were around. I mean, we were just meters from the shore. I recognized this fish coming around the corner here and I decided to take it as my first fish speared in Victoria. Um, I feel like such a day. Like I feel like so out of my um. Like it's so like I can't really use these gloves, and I I have to load with one finger on the. Uh, is that a bagpipe pitch? Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. I have to say it, it didn't move, <laughs> but this is a this is a such a cool experience. It's like. Yeah, it's like spearfishing again from the start. Awesome. I love it. 
my dive buddy Sven was nice enough to really clearly point out to me the first abalone I've ever actually seen underwater and he also told me to grab it really fast since we didn't have an abalone tool and I was absolutely stoked. Oh, that's huge! Is that big? Yeah. Awesome! I know it's quite a few there too. That. That's sick! You'll see heaps more where we go. So. Wow! I think I'm gonna be like the kook that just is frothing on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will say for some reason the swell doesn't seem to have as much force as I thought it would. Hi Sven! <laughs> what about that pinky? Too huh? small, that pink snapper? One minute later. That's not bad for two meters of water. That's not bad. Um, this blue throat looks decent. Go for it. We're just gonna stick this guy on the bottom and that uh, blue throat will probably come in and hover around. As you can see, I'm just totally not used to these big, thick southern gloves and it would take me three or four attempts to actually turn on my GoPro each time. I'm struggling to reach for my knife, but luckily Sven was kind enough to hand me his. So this is what I'm told, like the Victorian cutfish. Looks exactly like one, really. It looks like a, just like a gold spot wrasse. Awesome fish, it's pretty much like one of the fish I wanted to spear while I was here. I know they, they aren't super popular because I suppose they're not the hardest thing to spear, but I've heard they taste pretty good, so. Yeah, it's bloody awesome. Good work. I feel like such... I just, like, it's so hard with these gloves to do it. <laughs> yeah, those gloves suck, that's why. But they're good for craze, but that's why I don't like them. I wanted the southern spearfishing experience and I felt like I really got that. That was bloody awesome. It, it really makes you realise how adapted you become to your own conditions and how out of place you feel. It took me ages to reload my gun. Probably could have got more stuff but I think we've been a bit selective. It seemed like there was quite a lot of abalone. Vaginas. They, yeah, they really do. <laughs> You can imagine many a desperate sailor finding comfort, <laughs> something like that. As you can see, lots of life around. Every crack and ledge and cave was holding heaps and heaps of reef fish. It was awesome to see. Here I am about to tick off another iconic Victorian species, the sea sweep. Uh, I had no problem recognising this one either. Off in the distance is a school of Australian salmon or kahawai, which I've never speared before, but uh, at this point I had plenty of fish so I decided not to pursue them. There's another good blue throat wrasse, once again just taking it easy. Here's Sven doing some deep diving into some ledges for crayfish and this is when we started to have a really good look in some of these deep cracks for crays which were absolutely awesome to look into and each one held lots and lots of fish but uh, unfortunately no crays home on this particular day. I have 
no idea what this species of fish was, so I let it go, but almost looked a little bit like a coral trout, maybe some kind of wrasse. There's another big blue throat wrasse. Uh, just let that one go, eating some burley that we put down for snapper. Here's an example of some, there were so many awesome swim through caves and here I am swimming through one, just enjoying the totally different underwater terrain. And as I come up, Sven's going down and he's looking for crayfish. So here's our catch after dive number two. We got a beautiful little snapper, two King George Whiting, which unfortunately I didn't get on film because the GoPro died, a blue throat wrasse and a few other reefies. Absolutely stoked. So how is this? We've come in from a dive and I just thought we'll go for a snorkel in this little pool. This little pool area. And we found some abalone over there. And the water's crystal clear too. Consider that a pretty successful session, don't you reckon? Yeah, to hit two, not just King George Whiting, but two of the biggest King George Whiting <laughs> I've ever seen speared in Victoria yeah. is a pretty good feat. So. Yeah, beginner's luck, really. <laughs> like, I, I didn't, you know, like, maybe if I knew that they were decent, I would have had a harder time. I just saw it went, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's a, there's a Whiting, I reckon. Diving, I'd say, definitely way better than I expected. Um, I think you did the right thing by kind of talking it down because, <laughs> like, it was so much better than what I expected. Like, I, it was pretty abundant. This is a spot that we usually only go to, like, three times in a whole year, so yeah. That, yeah. that's probably also why, yeah. where if I took you to the other spots, you're like, all right, this, this sums up Victorian diving quite well. Yeah, yeah I, I, thought it was, I thought it was really abundant, like, the reef fit, there was heaps of reef fish around. Like we would have swam past hundreds of like ludricks and every cave had magpie perch and blue throat wrasse. And, like they all had good reef fish and um, it snappers and yeah, I thought it was pretty bloody good. Yeah. And then the abalones and ah, oh, just fantastic. no craze. No craze today, but anyways, it gives me an excuse to come back another time yeah. for another look. <laughs> it's been a long walk, hey. I'm walking on the Oh no! <laughs> yeah. This is my life now. <laughs> I've accepted it. <laughs> so we just gotta go all the way over there now. Almost back to the car park. Bit of an epic mission and the horse flies are next level. Holy crap. But it's such an awesome dive. Super. She's struggling to remove it from the shell. Yes. There you go. And how is amazing shell. is this shell? Oh, that's yeah. the mother of pearl shells. Yeah. We headed back to a friend's house to have a seafood cook up and my wife being a Kiwi hadn't cooked a power for a long time but you know it's in the blood so uh, we fried some up and I thought it tasted absolutely amazing and we also had the King George Whiting the next day which was superb as well. Bits of abalone. Tastes like squid. Squid and um, Squid and oyster combined. Pretty good. I'm really impressed. So we've got our King George Whiting fillets mm -hmm. and we're about to yeah. do them in classic chicken chip style. Yeah. Uh, yeah, first time trying them, we'll see how it goes. 
I just wanted to use this opportunity to give a big shout out to Sven for showing me around Victoria. I had an absolute blast and to be honest, I kind of can't wait to go back. It's very simple, really. Whoa, that's hot. I'm in on fish, but I'll try it. Don't you? Try this, you know, this whiting. It's just me, you go down, go down, face down. That's all right. Get Darcy in there too. Try the whiting with Darcy. <laughs> oh. You can see what the fuss is about. Like it is a yeah, very oh, yeah. Taste. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Solid. yeah. That's the sort of fish that you're, you're a tough critic. You just want to eat more. More yogurt. Which <laughs> yeah, well. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Do you like this?